All right, so titrations. In solution stoichiometry, sometimes you don't have enough information to solve the problem on paper. So for example, if they tell you that 10 milliliters of acetic acid reacts with 0.202 moles per liter um, NaOH solution, what is the concentration of the acetic acid? Well, if I look at my equation here, I know, or I don't know the concentration of the acetic acid, but I do know the volume. And I know the concentration of my NaOH, but I don't know my volume. So you need this volume in order to solve the problem. That's where the titration comes in. So a titration is, or is a procedure used to find the volume of a substance so that you can calculate concentration. Standardization is when a solution of known concentration and a solution, or a standard solution, is reacted with a solution of unknown concentration. So both strong acids and strong bases need to be standardized since their concentration, concentrations will change over time. So this is the setup. A solution called the titrant is transferred from, or from a precisely marked tube called a burette to a, or into a flask containing the sample and an indicator. An indicator, for example, methyl orange or bromothymol blue, is used because a sudden change in color indicates the completion of reaction. So the end point is where the titrant reacts completely with the sample, and the equivalence point is the volume needed to reach the end point. So you need a minimum of three trials within 0.20 milliliters of each other to ensure results are accurate. Okay. Now, for example, here I have 10 milliliter sample of HCl is titrated with a standard solution of 0.685 mole per liter NaOH. Bromothymol blue is used as it changes from yellow to blue at the end point. What is the concentration of HCl? Note, hydrochloric acid is titrated with NaOH, which means the hydrochloric acid is the sample in the flask and the NaOH is the titrant in the burette. Okay? We need to know this. This is very important to know in which order and what that statement means. Okay? You'll set up a data table like this. You'll figure out the average volume, which is where you're going to add all those together and you're going to divide it by three. It's going to give you a specific mil or amount. Okay? You're going to use that amount to figure out the amount of NaOH that you used, okay? And this happens to be in a nice one to one to one ratio, okay? But we're gonna take the concentration of our known and we're gonna multiply that by the volume that we just figured out, okay? To figure out the number of moles and then we're gonna use that number of moles or you can use that number of moles in order to figure out the amount of hydrochloric acid or the concentration of it, okay? Now, titration curves. A plot of the pH versus the vol volume of the titrant added is called a pH titration curve. The titration curves are S-shaped. So when a strong monoprotic acid is titrated with a strong monoprotic base, the, or the equivalence point will always have a pH of 7 at 25 degrees Celsius. The first point on the curve is always the pH of the sample. pH changes very gradually at first, and this is called the buffer region. As the endpoint approaches, the pH changes very rapidly, and the over-titration is asymptotic to the pH of the titrant, which means it never quite reaches it. So, a strong acid titrated with a strong base will create this sort of curve. Okay? Where when the pH is 7, okay, that's my equivalence point. If I drop a line down, that'll tell me the amount of volume. A strong base, though, titrated with a strong acid, will start at the base pH and go down to the acid pH. Again, this is both are strong. The equivalence point is 7. So pH meters can be used to carry out a titration because it's much more convenient to use the indicator. The indicators change color immediately, but the pH endpoint should fall between the pH range.